And we are live. Hello, everyone, everyone in the chat, anyone watching from the future. My name is Guillaume. This is Stoman's Guitars and Basses, and I'm here today with Mr. Josh Scott from JHS Pedals. How are you doing, sir? Doing great. Glad to be on here with you. This is uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it is. Hopefully. Um, that's that's quite the amount of lights and pedals and and whatnot behind you. Is that your garage? No, this this is so it's in the basement of my house. Okay. We bought we we moved into this house about four years ago, and there was like this unfinished room in the basement, and I turned it into like my design workbench is here. Yeah. I have like a guitar closet. I have a lot of pedals and I do design work and then I've been filming down here. So like, okay. Yeah. We, that was the, the setting for the last couple of videos. Yeah. When you see me setting, like there's a whiskey cabinet and a work. Bench, yeah. Like okay. it's right over here. You can't cool. really see it, but this is the weird, like clutter angle. <laughs> and yeah, the, the couch is just full of color sound pedals. Like as, as you like your couch. Oh. Yeah. It's, <laughs> It's madness, but you know, yeah, this it's is looking fun. good. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. Um, it's really good to meet you. Um, if that's okay with you, I'm going to start off with a little bit of uh, of backstory and a personal question uh, yeah, yeah. to give the people in the chat some time to settle in and uh, ask away. Uh, so, backstory first. I'm obviously a massive fan of your work as a as a pedal. Uh, designer, the double barrel has been a staple on my board, and it, I absolutely love it. But I also really enjoy um, what you do on YouTube and the storytelling aspect of what you do. And okay. it's um, yeah. So I got around to learning how you started making pedals and everything. I was like, yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll do it too. Maybe I'll maybe I'll try that. Started looking around, modding stuff, and um, and then I found wait. There are kits. There are kits of pedals that you can fully assemble yourself. That sounds cool, and that's cheaper. So I'm going to do that instead. And I did. Made some pedals. Really happy with it. Then most of them fried. Still fun. And so I guess my question is this. In your personal experience, do you think it's more profitable for someone to start doing kits, which is essentially just like IKEA furniture, you know, R1 in that hole, C1 in that one, or to open something that's already been assembled and sort of having to read up and to understand what does what where and, and so on. What What's the best as an entry point for you? Yeah, yeah. So, so to clarify, an entry point for someone like you just wanting to learn how to make some pedals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I started with modding boss pedals. Yeah. But then I quickly... I remember ordering pretty early on. Uh, there's a there's a U.S. page called General Guitar Gadgets. Mm -hmm. I I think I ordered a couple kits from there, and as I so the kits were second for me. Um, really, I think either way. I I mean, as I look back in it, I think kits are really cool because some of the the biggest problem with learning to build a pedal, number one is soldering. Yeah, properly. Like, yeah, that's don't, a learning curve. <laughs> don't neglect the art of like just learn to solder well. What mm. and now there's YouTube galore. Like back when I started, oh, yeah. it was a little hard. Mm. Now you can go on and like you know there's so many resources. So practice soldering on some things before you start your pedal, and then from there, the kits are so nice because the second biggest problem is like what parts do I buy. Like, where do I get the things to yeah. make this thing? It's so mysterious. Like, you know, I said I'm 13, 14 years in. I like, I know where everything's at, but it's like, if you just, like, if you told me to go make an amp, I almost have problems with that. And I'm pretty experienced. Like, I have friends that are amp builders. Yeah. There's just these different little categories of where you get parts and what mm. you should buy. So the kit does all that for you. So if you know how to solder, and if you can actually, you mentioned IKEA, I think it's a really good parallel. Yeah. If you can actually follow the instructions and don't and, and don't try to rush it, like yeah. that's the other problem. I think the third problem. So soldering is number one. Number two is where do I get the parts, and number three is like 
I'm in a hurry. I just want to make my tube screamer. You're yeah. gonna mess it up. You're gonna to totally fry it. You're gonna screw it up. Yeah, so just that. take your time. <laughs> it's like that IKEA, like something here. We, my wife. Yeah, my wife bought this like filing cabinet assembly from IKEA. Oh my gosh, I like. <laughs> I almost lost my mind on that thing because I got ahead of it. I kept not just reading the instructions. So I think kits are great. I think modding is really great, but modding has a couple difficulties. Like you have to remove parts. That's another skill. Like you have yeah. to look at a boss pedal and be like, how do I unsolder this and not destroy it? <laughs> the That's whole a thing, problem. Yeah. So the kit, I think the kit's the way to go. If you can make sure you solder well, find good kits. Pretty yeah. much every kit's good. I See, like my, general guitar gadgets, and there's one called 1776 uh, Effects here as well. But, yeah, and if you just take your time and, like, do it right, don't get in a hurry. Yeah. I've always regretted when I get in a hurry. Yeah, I, I, I feel that. Uh, sorry, I was like, <laughs> Stanislav in the comments just called that an Avengers crossover. I'm really happy with that comparison. Thank you so much. Uh, but the origin of the question was like, only now after maybe like a year or two of making some pedals, I, I only start to understand why this bit is doing that and why right. if I change that that value I'm gonna get more bass, less bass, more gain. Because at first I was just basically assembling it without any real understanding of what what was doing where. So yeah, yeah. that I, I guess that was the so now I'm I'm up to a second learning curve of trying to figure out Yeah. I know that's a I know that's a capacitor, but what is a capacitor? <laughs> so you're what you're into now, it's exciting for me because I'm about to start. So we have the JHS show. Yeah. I'm going to start uh, another thing called Short Circuit. I'm calling it oh, Short Circuit. Oh, and I'm going to cool like, name. that is a cool I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to be live, but done really well. Mm -hmm. I like high quality cameras. It's going to be prop. It's not going to be like an iPhone propped up. You know, yeah. it's going to be done really well. And I'm going to teach the basics of like, famous circuits and how they work I and bread in so yeah like where you're at is like a lot of people you and i did this forever you know i could build a fuzz face but what does the first cap do what is the 2.2 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so i'll be able to walk through that with people and i'll be totally free that'll be on youtube so yeah keep your eye open for that because where you're at is the fun part of you will eventually, and I hope that this show that I'm going to work on and probably get out in the next month, the first episode, it's awesome. going to demystify, like, it's not, you don't have to be a wizard. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. there's really only, like, f when you get into distortion or dirt, mm. there's, like, five circuits. <laughs> there really are only five things, and then you learn what what's going on and you can recognize stuff in schematics and you know like i'm sitting here i'm doing some research on the dod 250s yeah. i have like gobs of them here <laughs> you know the difference in that and a distortion plus is like if you can build one you've built the other yeah. so there's like a lot of things once you learn that and then you learn like oh the rat is actually one of those two with more parts and you you get building blocks and then you learn like, that would be really fun. But you're in a cool spot. Like, probably my favorite spot of you're trying to figure out how the circuit actually works. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's it's really yeah. fun. And it's it's nice to have all these, as you said, like, resources online. And I'm so not many struggling that much if I type pretty much any question that I have into YouTube. Either you or Brian Wampler will pop up with the right. answer. So. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. That's cool. Nice. Um, okay, we had some some pre questions already. People have been yeah. waiting for like two hours in the chat. Um, uh, so Stanislav, thank you again for your uh, Avengers crossover <laughs> comparison. Had a really good question from the start. Uh, he was looking for something. Um, so scenario is he has every regular pedal. He has the dirt. He has the reverb. He has the delay, and he's looking out for something outside the box. What JHS pedal would you recommend for something that's out of the ordinary? 
So, yeah, that one's tough because I don't, I don't know what music, I don't know what he's into. You know, like what kind of music he plays or whatever. Generally speaking, this, what I'm gonna say could sound negative. It's not. It's just generally JHS is in the box. Like, yeah. like I like. I think when. I love crazy pedals. I use some crazy stuff, but I think mm. from my brain and like aesthetically and sonically, when I sat down, it's always like bread and butter. That's the saying, like kind of yeah, yeah, bread yeah. butter things. So things that I make that get a little crazy, I, I think of like even a classic Univibe circuit. Like I did the unicorn. Yeah. The things we added into that, you can do some really interesting, never before done things. The color box is definitely oh, yeah. the most out of the box thing, and the crayon has a lot of that in it. But the color box is wild, but it's also an essential little simple thing, or it can be pretty crazy. You know, the 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 Kodiak tremolo has a really unique mode on it. Um, where it's like this strange ramping waveform. So that's odd. And yeah, I mean, out of the box to even something like the Space Commander, oh, you know, yeah. that's strange. Like it has some familiar things in it, but it's also very strange. So maybe that's helpful. If you want really crazy, you need to go buy Earthquaker stuff or okay. like, you know, yeah. It just it just have, answered acid acid blues. Acid blues. So <laughs> I I mean I I would say the unicorn. I would yeah. say the unicorn and the color box would be phenomenal for that. Um yeah. Cool. That's my final answer on that one. That's a good one. Thank you. Uh kind of in the same category, the first the first one in the chat actually, Vladimir, was looking for a pedal sound that no software can do no you know um modeling amp no effect processor is there something that would come to mind for you know in spite of all the people using multi effects <laughs> uh something that no pro <laughs> It, it's tough because DSP, like I had never heard a good DSP Univibe sound. Back to Univibe because I yeah. love Univibe. Yeah. And then you know Brian puts out the Terraform. Yeah. And I got it and I was like, all right, <laughs> okay. You know, it's like I can tell little differences. But I was like, I play this. I think that with distortion, like. The harmonics in certain distortions, DSP is really good at, but there's just something warm and huge about, you know, certain fuzzes, like a fuzz face. Yeah. Like can can we get? It doesn't feel the same. Like, and just play, just the so rea Jermaine, just yeah, the reaction of your your guitar volume onto it. Like I, I'm yet to find something that does what the fuzz face do in you know, a modeler or yeah, just a, just a, a multi-effect processor is, is something that is so linked that, that that's not just within the unit, but that makes the whole rig sort of react together. And that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the feel and the touch of like, just a, fu like a fuzz face is probably just those primitive, simple, circuits you know a fuzz face only has a few parts and there's just something about it that's that's just so crude Sym that the dsp symbiotic. can't quite do it yeah i get that um okay we've got some we've got some personal questions there Cy taylor c taylor sorry uh what did josh study to start in the electric Electri uh, haha, electrical industry. God, that, that was hard. What did you yeah, study, Josh? What did I? Uh, hold on, I'll show you one of my favorite books. Let me let me wade through the chaos. <laughs> um, Okay, here 
I come. So, first, the the medium answer to that is I started modifying boss pedals. So, I was trying to figure out, like you said earlier, what does this part do? So, I would actually remove a part and change it and make notes in a notebook. So, very very crazy archaic like imagine making a map of europe like on a horse it's <laughs> like, kind of what i was doing but then i built some kits and i started realizing similarities in things um i did not go to school i actually am a pretty horrible student which is ironic because i love to teach like <laughs> i find myself teaching all over the world it's like different set of skills man I love history. I like my whole show is like I love teaching, but like I have a hard time learning, like in a classroom setting. But I got a hold of some really practical books and I just read them. Like this is okay. like a whole book on op amplifiers, like <laughs> op amps. It's so boring and amazing. <laughs> so like this, um, this is called this is famous, the I see op amp cookbook. cookbook yeah. Um, you've got, you know, these old Navy textbooks like op amp applications. Like you can open this up, and this is what's crazy, is you start read like this book was published. Let's say the seven. It's got to be seventies. Everything about it screaming seventies. <laughs> you know, I held a DoD two fifty. Yeah. So you go into this book. That has nothing to do with music or guitar pedals. And, oh, that's basically how the 250 works. Because parts are parts. They, yeah, they, yeah, didn't, yeah. they didn't invent the 741 chip for an overdrive pedal. Like, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is my favorite book. So if you're, if you're wanting to learn from a book, this is freaking gold right here. Small Signal Audio Design by Douglas Self. I've sold so many copies of this because it's just like, see my tabs? Like, <laughs> like literally, my crayon, that's the EQ. I just took it straight out of this book. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's an old radio EQ that I'd yeah. never seen here. Um, over here is like a full tone stack thing. I use this, like modified it into the new Angry Charlie. Like I learn from these books. I'll breadboard it. There's some really and good then, references. Yeah, and then I just get around smarter people. I mean, <laughs> like for, for me, like Robert Keeley has been, he's like my Yoda, you know. Yeah. He's taught me so much. Jamie Stillman, like we're all sim like we're similar ages, but he got started before me. So there's always text flying around, and we, a lot of, uh, Brian Wampler, too, my mm. lord, like, Brian, yeah. I can text and be like, hey, you got any cool tone controls? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just always learning. I'm just trying to always learn, so, yeah. That's that's awesome. That's so good to hear, and that's something that's, that's always amazed me in the, in the pedal community and the pedal maker community is that sort of general geekery that that transcends everything else it's like you're all so excited about that small piece of the value of that part and that just right it's right. it's incredible to watch i, I really enjoy well, that we're all we're all amazed that we get to make these little toys for a living yeah, you know yeah. like i that's how i feel i'm really i just want to keep learning and i'm every day i'm like this is crazy you know yeah. i get to make these boxes um thank you for your answer sorry i was uh yeah. trying to no, pick no. up pick up some questions you're, there you're navigating <laughs> um we have a we have a good one nick uh josh mentioned slow drive in an interview about his pedal board it'd be cool to hear more about his relationship to the band personally and through jhs and the shoegazing genre oh who who asked this Nick Nicholas Nick Nicholas yeah Nicholas it's pretty small yeah so I where did I first hear them where did I first hear them I guess it would be 
The first, okay, this is what's crazy with them. So they're, I love them, but I, I heard the first thing I heard was the 2017 record, which is like the new record. I think I was listening to NPR, which is kind of like our BBC. Yeah. Um, and I heard it and I was like, what is that? And it was just like so amazing. I think it was the song Slow Mo. And then uh, one of my guys at work, Joshua, another Joshua, he does uh, he does technician work and repairs. He was like, oh, well, yeah, have you heard the first album? And I was like, what? They're like an old band? I thought they were a new band. <laughs> yeah. So I hear the, and then I, they became my favorite like shoegaze vibe band ever. But I had really loved, you know, my buddy Valentine. I was a fan I was a big fan. There's a there's a band from Kansas called the Appleseed Cast. And I think the genre, they're not shoegaze, but they're like they're like weird ambient indie rock. And I think that was the first stuff I ever heard. So when I find when I heard and this was I heard that like 15, 20 years ago. When I heard Slow Dive, it was like everything I ever wanted to hear. Now I have no relationship with them. i as far as I know, I've never talked to them. I don't know that they have any JHS. I just love them. I think they're amazing. So if anyone knows them, let them know. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes at the same time, because to be honest, I'm kind of completely literate in the shoegaze genre. So I'm just like, I'll go and listen yeah. to all of that afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, listen to the Apple Seed cast and an album called Low Level Owl. Low level owl. Now I don't think that's shoegaze, but I think it is. I okay. think it is shoegaze. And then my bloody Valentine, like that is the most iconic. That first, it's called Loveless. That's like the definitive shoegaze record, I believe. Yeah. I've I've heard I've heard about my bloody Valentine. Not the all everything and, else that was mentioned. No clue whatsoever. So I, I'll get on this. And I think for me, the last thing on this is like. I have always been, because I'm like a grunge kid. I got mm -hmm. a guitar because of Pearl Jam. I remember getting into Sonic Youth. And yeah. Sonic Youth was like, I I never could like say they were grunge or like they weren't really, they That's were bad. alternative. But they were very weird. <laughs> and I loved them. And I feel like they, I feel like that was part of my shoegaze progression. Like Sonic Youth, a lot of Sonic Youth to me feels like shoegaze. Yeah. I, 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 I get that, definitely. I'm, I'm more familiar with that, at least. <laughs> um, oh. We had... Where was it? Yes, there it is. Uh, Fran? Frank? Fran? Uh, I don't know. That seems like half a name, but maybe it's the full name, and I'm very sorry about this. Uh, what's the best way to get into breadboarding, and do you think that breadboarding um, is a good way to learn about electronics individually and their consequence? on a circuit yeah it's the best there's nothing there's nothing better than breadboarding like because and that's like my short circuit show that i'm developing kind of in the background secretly yeah. I, that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna teach like the first episode will be like breadboarding essentials it'll be like an hour of me like here's a breadboard here's how i'd put my pots in the board here's the wire i use it'll just be very Every, you know, unless you want to do this, you'll hate it. It'll just yeah. be, and, but if you want to do it, you'll be like, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but I could picture my wife just being like, shoot me. Like, I do <laughs> not want to watch this. This is going to be so nerdy. So breadboarding is important because you can build, let's go back to, let's say tube screamer. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You can build a tube screamer kit. It's a, it's a four out of 10 difficulty. If you take your time, you can build the kit, solder it. It'll probably work. Now, if you breadboard it, it's a little harder to breadboard. But when you get the hang of it, it's like, it's like, I'm bad with Legos, but like I know this dude, like he builds freaking crazy stuff out of Legos because he does yeah. it all the time. It's just yeah, like yeah. second nature. That's how you get better at it. And when you breadboard the tube screamer, you don't have to solder, meaning you don't have to unsolder. So if I want to change the diode or the op amp or change the C1 cap and make it more bassy, you literally reach down and you're like, oh, I'll just change it. 
Yeah. Done. That's like awesome. So if you're a nerd, if you're a nerd and you're wanting to learn in real time, the breadboard is like the Lego of circuit building. It's fantastic. Yeah. Sounds really exciting. (laughs) So that's my my short circuit show will be. I'm looking forward to that. This This feels like a nice. uh, It's giving me hope that my show will actually be watched. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's really cool, uh, and and good timing too. Now we 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 know what to look forward to, and in short circuits and uh, breadboarding. Uh, yeah. Some questions about clones, clones, clones of clones, and more. Clones it, of w- clones, clones of clones, and clones of other. When is Josh going to make a perfect clone of the DoD two fifty? Since those pedals are almost unobtainable today. Oh, uh, you know that's been on my mind a bunch because I can't show you here, but like, I'm <laughs> I have it. actually I am gonna show you. Hold on. This is an episode I'm working <laughs> on. This is this is my life. These are all originals. The ones on my desk are all originals with the boxes. And I'm dating them. So like 1980 and there's the chip. So I've gone through, I've dated them all. Look at this. Nobody even knows this exists. What? This is the 75th DoD pedal ever made. Don't tell anybody. Okay, now. So there's all of these. These are all so variants. Cool. These are like so variations. Cool. Um, and <laughs> so with the show, like People Nick are and I screaming, are, he has the box, he has the box. <laughs> I have so many boxes. So, you know, Nick and I, we're always traveling and we have the Patreon yeah. and that's helping travel expenses. And I'm interviewing people, quite frankly, before they pass away. So the founder of DOD is David D. Francesca, and then there's John Johnson. That's the two guys. So I've interviewed, I've interviewed Tom Cram. I've gathered the real history. Yeah. And the right now, within probably within a month, you'll see something like the it, ultimate history of the DOD 250. That'll be an episode. So everybody knows that now that's watching this. So that's fun. <laughs> And it really got me thinking about, like, I want to put out a 250 style pedal. Like, I was like, because it's so cool. Yeah. And I feel like I've proven through all this research for years, I always thought, and most people think that, you know, like MXR was first and then DOD copied them. Man, yeah. I don't think that was the case. I actually think it's the other way around now. Uh, because of my dating. So like I'm going through like a super nerd. Yeah. I'm dating all of these. And the and the and the detective work here is kind of yeah, I was gonna me. say you're just turning into the Batman of the pedal industry, man. This is this is crazy. Yeah, like this I'm spoiling my own episode, but that's okay. Everyone will <laughs> wanna watch it. This is this is a game changer. This is his garage address. Oh, man. This was built in the garage. And inside it's dated 1972. So oh. here's the problem. The first versions of this are 74. The hell? That's what I that's what I live for. <gasps> this is so cool. I get like I get so excited with this kind of stuff. So Will I do one? Yeah. In the meantime, I really like. I think Jamie's uh, great channel yeah. is really yeah. great. It's a you know it's a little busy. It's two it's two and one whatever. It's super cool though. And this yeah. was like how Jamie got started with the two fifty. Um, I really did that one. So yeah, I spoiled my whole episode, but as long as everybody promises to watch it anyway, we're good. 
Oh, they will. They will. Because now the the reactions are pretty split, to be honest. That half of them, are, like, now we know why there are no DOD 250 on reverb. Josh has them all. Uh, I've got I someone have, saying right? that Ingve has the hub. Ingve has the other half of them. <laughs> I have like pre- thirty DoD two fifties right here. <laughs> thirty, and then there's you know like this is a this is actually a variation in the timeline. So there's I'm going to teach all that. I'll I'll walk away from this subject. I'm going to teach everyone. It's going to be a cool episode because. I'm going to show in linear time how the 250 evolved all the way through the 90s. And you're going to find out that certain things are 250s and you never knew it. That's going to be really fun. So that's That sounds so cool. I'm it'll be really a little bit of D, like DOD history, obviously. You'll learn yeah. a lot about DOD as well. That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, in reaction to your... Uh, announcement of the new format Antonio is asking what tools should we prepare for the upcoming show besides the breadboard and your recommendation on the size and the kind of thing they should gather before that's coming out I um not right now see the beauty is it'll be YouTube live but then it'll be up forever like once it ends it'll be up forever so um, you don't have to feel such a panic I've got to think through, you know, any I breadboard think it's more will excitement. work. <laughs> yeah, it's really pure bad. excitement. Yeah, I get excited too. So <laughs> it's like, it, you know, I don't have any great lists right now or anything to, to kind of go on or explain. The first circuit I do, I think I'm going to do, uh, there's a circuit from 66. It's called the Astrotone Fuzz. Um, it's also known as the Sam Ash fuzz. It's pretty unique and cool, and it's really simple. So if people want to look at that schematic and whatever. But just, I, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just watch it, and then you, I'll have links. I'll make sure in the description to tell you what you need, and then you can get it and rewatch it. Because if you're cool. actually going to do the show, like the class... Mm-hmm. You're going to be pausing stuff and watching stuff, so it's fine. Yeah, just in- enjoy it while it's live and then go back to it to actually do. Yeah, like it while, it's, while it's live, like put on some pajamas <laughs> and like some snacks. Any recommendations on the snacks? <laughs> Cheetos, man. Flaming Hot Cheetos. Cheetos. Oh, yes. They're actually yeah. hard to come by here. It's like to do special orders. <laughs> um cool yeah (laughs) you guys are too smart to stock flaming hot cheetos Uh, there's some other stuff that could definitely be banned (laughs) but yeah um someone uh, i'm sorry i i didn't write this one down someone was asking about the the black box and the morning glory and how what what were the differences in between the two i think there was something like this oh okay so I'm going to assume, so like in the 90s, Marshall put out these series of pedals. I refer, I don't know if they're actually, I say this on the show, but the Black Box series. So it's yeah. like the Blues Breaker. Yeah. There's the Governor, Blues Breaker, Shred Master, and um, there's one more. Jack Ham, no. And it doesn't matter. Anyway, so there's the... Um, there's the the black block black box blues breaker. So my morning glory, I use those old blues breakers forever. And one of my first designs was like, I want to modify this into a new pedal for me. It was like my, in hindsight, it's funny because it was like my signature pedal is what I wanted. Yeah. Uh, so really, the differences are, um, it has an output gain stage on the volume control so it's louder Mm. you can switch in and out a capacitor in what's called the feedback loop that darkens it or lets it stay bright that's the high pass that's the that's the dark bright switch yeah and then when we went to version four it got real crazy so i introduced a bunch of stuff high gain mode which is a little too complicated to explain it's not just clipping it's it's actually a lot of stuff changes and the red remote system activates that um yeah i mean essentially 
It's gonna, yeah, you got, you got it there. Yeah. I mean, essentially, it's the same sound. Yeah. But high gain mode, red remote, more volume, the ability to tame off some of the high end. Yeah. To me, it's an improved version. That's preference. Some people might not think so, whatever. It definitely won't break like the old one. That's another improvement. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I've got some professionals in the in the chat. You need chopsticks to eat Cheetos. Do not eat Cheetos while tweaking pedals. Bad idea. <laughs> it's like people with experience there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be real real messy. <laughs> uh Schmart, Schmart tube is asking JHS has the Mafletta and the Bonsai. Is there another multi circuit pedal? from jhs coming in the near future or anything that you would dream of making we are releasing a new one at the end of the year oh my <laughs> there's I'm, so much I happening you know, like it's been 35 minutes but it's <laughs> i don't yes. think i've told anybody that yet that felt good oh my. Uh, maybe i've hinted at it, it i really mean i'm always so my my instagram is like this constant hinting at everything but nobody a lot of people don't realize it yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah there is a new one there's a new one oh that is that is awesome we're we're like 50% finished i think it'll be i think it'll be one of the i think it it'll be one of my favorites so i'm excited that's that's really good to hear is cuz that's funny with these multi circuit when the bonsai came out and every single gear reviewer on youtube just went like that is the thing that everyone has like everyone has seen that come out and were like yes yes yeah this i mean the- <laughs> i my uh now the new one is not this but the so let me tell you where the you want to know where the ideas came from for that yeah please so like i was into tone benders big time like there's all these on the couch and yeah you know, I've even done like the 66 series stuff. Um, and I wanted to do a multi tone bender. I started thinking, like, man, could I do something where. And my brain just started moving. And then I realized, like, the big problem there is I can't do germanium components because I can't make, like, like a bonsai, you know, you sell, we've sold almost, we've sold over 10,000 of them. There's no way I could find. 20 or 15,000 germanium parts. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. The price would be like $500. So I was like, okay, that idea led me into it. And I was like, I'm going to do the big muff because it's silicon. There's enough versions. I'd collected them all. That went well. And then the tube screamer. What's funny is like, as a player, I don't think I'd ever use the bonsai. Like, I'm not a huge tube screamer fan. Yeah. But I am a huge fan of the legacy and the story, and I do love the circuits. But as a player, I just don't... It's funny. Like, I don't know that... It's not my favorite. I was, Doing it was massive and, like, really amazing, but this next one is something I would actually use on my board a lot, I think. So I'm excited for that. But it kind of came from, like, could I do a tone bender? No, nah, too complicated. We did the big muff. We did the bonsai. And now, this idea now was actually one of the original ideas and we're actually finally ex- executing it. Damn. I'm, I'm looking, not, forward um, to, looking forward to see that. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. How do you... I'm just trying to go back quickly to what you said about your signature pedal being the, the, the morning glory and the way you, you okay. modify that circuit to be yours compared to something like the bonsai, which is such an incredible amount of work at the same time for something that you personally are not going to use. Is, is like the excitement different? Are you doing these pedals for different reasons or is it just for the sake of making a cool pedal? Um, I don't think it's ever for the sake of making a cool pedal like that kind of doesn't last, you know, Yeah. for me. It's like it's the education thing, like the Tube Screamer deal. It was researching and 
and just realizing like this circuit's so wild like all these iterations and like my love for the ibanez 10 series like having that ts10 and like realizing some of these are getting too expensive because john mayer keeps playing them or like (laughs) so part of it was like yeah the educational factor of going yeah i just this would be really valuable to people to just stop all the nonsense like stop paying 450 dollars for a tube screamer like can i take it and replicate these perfectly And, like, that was the motivation. It was more, it was, like, it was a real motivation of, like, the challenge, number one. Like, it's really hard to, you know, it's, like, I've joked before. You notice no one's done these. Nobody's copied these. Yeah. It's, like, a clone that you can't clone. Like, the Tube Screamer is ironic because it's just a nine Tube Screamer clone. It's not... The innovation isn't the circuit. It's the innovation is like the mechanics of how we did it. Our circuits in there. Yeah. It's like this unclonable clone, <laughs> which is really funny because it's not like we didn't R and D the circuits. They were already designed. Yeah. Now the R and D took six months to properly replicate drift of components and all that. And then the switching circuits, like it's so complicated. But it's ironic because, like, they're so hard to do. Like, nobody's done anything like it still. And the Muffaletta's been out for years. I mean, yeah. that. but so the motivation was kind of like, this is so hard to do. I just want to do it because it's hard yeah, to do. It, yeah. And then number two is, like, this is actually useful. Everybody wants a tube screamer of some sort. I mean, you have the double barrel, so you, you're you yeah. using that tube screamer. It's like yeah. the tube screamer is the most identified tone on the face of the earth. Can we do a version that kind of tells the stories and teaches people what they're actually buying? Like, you get on a forum and people start talking about tube screamers, it's madness. Like, it makes me so crazy because people just repeat stuff. They don't yeah. know what they're talking about. And you'll just see people claiming something sounds totally different than this. But it's like, I'm sitting here as a circuit designer, like, no, it's the same circuit. You just like how it looks. You like how that one looks. And you think it sounds better. So the bon- the bonsai was a bit of a chance to demystify that stuff. Well, that was... Uh, yeah. that was and the in- same with this. Well done. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was confusing. Sorry. Um. Well, that was yeah. That was pretty much that was pretty much the end of the answer. <laughs> I guess. Okay. Um. I yeah, feel I like hope this was fun and useful. I've had fun. I I had a blast. It was it was brilliant. We're definitely gonna make a new a new title and new thumbnail for that video. Everything coming for JHS pedals and and. Tease right. how much. Um, no, it was it was really really cool, man. Thank you so much for st- taking the time and uh, spending uh, spending some time here. Yeah, thank you guys. It was a blast. Hopefully, I'll see you around when the world's more normal. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll see you on uh, on YouTube and uh, and yeah, it was really fun. Thank you, everyone in the chat, anyone that was here, anyone watching the replay at any time in the future. And uh, stay safe, keep making music or pedals, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks again, Josh.